I think I was um, being asked to do the assistant winemaker's job, and I think that at the time I may have still had one of these funny titles like uh, Cellar Hand Plus or something like that, but I was on my way to assistant winemaker, and uh, uh, yeah, for all intents and purposes, that's what I was doing, but uh, but yeah, there was some weird title changes there as I as I went through the ranks there at GoldenEye. Yeah, I had graduated from RAT, but I hadn't really yet gotten to the point where they were too comfortable m with me, you know, sure. like speaking about anything other than the very basic day-to-day -day stuff that I was doing, so. <laughs> A really nice model that we've got going with Duckhorn Wine Company. It's fairly unique, I think, too, within the context of uh, California wine business where we've got, you know, a, a group of wineries like we do with Duckhorn Wine Company and to have uh, individual championing each of those brands and really leading each of those brands, uh, it's it's unique. And, and like you said, you know, it, it allows for all of us to have, um, you know, a lot of resources within our, within our group to be able to reach out and, you know, bounce ideas ideas or ask questions if we find ourselves in a spot. So yeah, it's uh, it's great to have uh, all of the winemaking people that we do and all the knowledge and know-how that we do within our team. It's been, uh, it's been good and it's fun to be a part of that too. I grew up about 40 miles north of Denver in a town called Longmont, but yeah, right, right there in Colorado. Yeah, it's uh, you were kind of out there on an island in the redwoods, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, just a beautiful area and really good sense of community up there, which still exists to this day. And you know, I miss that to an extent. But uh, at the same time, you know, it's nice being a, a little bit closer to some of the creature comforts that we've got down here in, in uh, the Russian River Valley. Yeah, 2016 is my third vintage as the as the winemaker for migration. That's right. Well, I think one of the things that uh, Duckhorn does a good job of with uh, with us winemakers as we as we kind of as we turn over, so to speak, in uh, our winemaking positions is there's the motto of. Um, of evolution, not revolution. So I think that, you know, the idea is that if, uh, if I have a style of wine that uh, differs much from uh, my predecessor, that, uh, that I gradually get to that point where, uh, where I've made the wines that I wanna make. So, so yeah, there's been some subtle changes, but uh, nothing really dramatic. I would say, you know, maybe picking just a hair earlier than my predecessor, uh, maybe toning down the oak just a little bit, but you know, for all intents and purposes, you know, we're still doing, I think the, the spirit of what we're trying to do with migration remains the same, which is uh, really well-balanced wines that have a uh, good palate presence and um, come from really awesome, cool climate regions from throughout California. Yeah. Obviously having that support and that feeling that, um, that whatever the vision is that we have and the philosophy that we have as winemakers within this organization, we're able to, um, you know, make take steps and and uh and make those wines and and no one really pushes back unless I, I haven't tried to do anything too crazy so i don't know if they would push back i assume so but but uh but yeah i mean it feels it feels more like support than anything else at this point so which is great yeah that's true unfortunately it's under the golden eye label so i don't get to do too much other than uh, be uh, enjoying taster. Uh, <laughs> I get to share my opinion and that's about it. But um, but no, it's it's fun to see a project that, uh, you know, I was a part of uh, the early the early stages in that project and kind of to see where it is now and uh, see the wines that they're producing, uh, the, the Golden Eye Sparkling Wine, it's really great. I'm not sure if you had the opportunity to taste it yet. Obviously, I think with uh, neighbors up in the Anderson Valley, like uh, Rotor and, and uh, you know some of the others up there, it's like okay, uh, there's compelling reasons why we should be trying sparkling wine up here, and uh, I'm happy that uh, that that's come to pass. And uh, some really awesome wine. I try to keep a bottle around at all times. <laughs> Yeah, we're about uh, we're doing about thirty thousand cases total at this point. You know, between both Pinot Noir and Chardonnay from the Russian River Valley, and then in addition to that, we've got uh, we've got uh, quite a few vineyard designate wines from from both the Russian River Valley and beyond. Well, you know, I think right now we've uh, we've purchased some uh, estate ground here in the Russian River Valley to uh, support migration, and obviously that's uh, keeping in the tradition of Duckhorn Wine Company in general. All of our brands are supported by estate viticulture, which is a, a very important thing, controlling the, controlling the source, uh, being able to have our farming practices, our cultural practices in the vineyard uh, helps translate into the wines that we want to make. So that's uh, obviously a, a huge 
part of it. And uh, really, you know, I think that uh, for the, f at least in the near term, I haven't heard anything too exciting uh, about, you know, uh, really changing anything up much. I think we're going to be here in the Russian River Valley. But, you know, as part of our model, we've been exploring uh, the Santa Rita Hills. We've been exploring Santa Maria Valley. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. I think we'll continue to look at the really cool, uh, cool climate appellations in California. Yeah, we are, we are. We've got a new ownership group this week, and uh, you know it's a uh, another private equity group, which we're all really excited about. And I think you know they uh, they recognize that uh, Duckhorn has been doing a uh, good good job at running the, their wine business. And uh, it sounds like you know from from my seat, we get to keep making wine and keep doing the things we're doing. And obviously, that's uh, you know for me, that's really important. And uh, and you know I think from the employee perspective i think we're all really happy that it's, it sounds like it's going to be business as usual we're, we had some good years with gi partners and uh you know i think we all really appreciate uh the growth and the support and everything that happened over those years and and uh, me personally i'm just really excited about the next chapter here and kind of uh seeing where we can take it from here sort of watching the wine you know grow up or evolve whatever however you want to say it but yeah you know you go from um from juice to to a young wine like we've got in the glass right now to a wine that's ml complete and still young and then, you know, kind of as it evolves through uh, its barrel aging process, it's it's really a fun process to to be a part of and to kind of watch and reference. And for those of us who uh, you know might might not have the mental Rolodex that some of the others do, I like to make notes just so I can refer back to them. But yeah, but you know, definitely, there's a lot of that where you kind of um, you, thinking about where you've been, where the wine is, where it's going. Um, you know, hope think reflecting on the decisions that you've made to get to that point and you know was it the right one what would I do differently next year because I only get one chance every year to do this so yeah there's a there's a lot of that where uh, you know you kind of get to you're you're, the, you're a steward of the process and uh, and being able to be there with that wine as it as it evolves through the process is just uh, it's a it's a cool thing it's really exciting to be a part of